I've been in therapy for 10 years and here are 10 things I've learned throughout my time in it. Of course, I will tell you how I got into therapy and why I was in therapy in the first place, where I am now in it. And of course, at the end of the video, I will tell you the 10 things. I do wanna preface this by saying that obviously I'm not a therapist. I'm just telling you what I've learned in therapy. I've been seeing my therapist for 10 years, but I only see her every other week does that mean I've seen her for five years? Is that what's considered girl math? I don't know. You guys can tell me in the comments. I'm gonna tell you first what therapy is not. I feel like a lot of people these days misuse the word therapy. They have a notion in their heads about what therapy is and isn't. I get a lot of opinions on what people think therapy is from people that's never been in therapy. And it's very weird. Therapy is not a cure-all thing. Therapy is not like a magic wand you can put over your problems and all of a sudden after one session all your issues, your trauma is has magically disappeared. Therapy is not coaching. Therapy is not coaching because I feel like people confuse therapy with coaching sometimes. Therapy is more long term and it kind of kind of focuses on all the variety of things that you want to focus on in your life. Coaching is very specific to your needs at the time. For me, I would like coaching on a career. Like, so I would probably hire a, a career coach to tell me how to navigate getting a career. If I'm looking for something that has to do with relationships, I will ask a relationship coach. A therapist can help you find a relationship and a career, but they can do more than that at the, at the same time. And last but not least, the third thing I believe that therapy is not is a hand-holding tool. A therapist is not there to hold your hand through every single aspect of your life because most of the time you're only gonna be spending 45 minutes to an hour with them. So they're not gonna be, and then maybe you'll see them once a week, they're not gonna be around every day. So they can't hold your hand through every single thing. You come to them with a problem and they will help you with a specific problem that you may or may not have. I think that therapy is more about guiding you through your life's difficulties and any sort of questions or confusions that you might have about anything that's happening in your life. If you have any confusion about a choice that you have to make, a therapist can help probably help you with that. If you have any belief system that you are like confused about, a therapist will probably help you with that. Therapy is more long-term, but you don't have to go to therapy for years and years like me. You can go to therapy for one month, and if you feel better after one month, okay, good for you. You you've you you're you're good, you're good to go. My journey to therapy and finding therapy started back in college. I had recently just moved to San Francisco and when I moved to San Francisco, guys, I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any friends. I had never even been to the city before I went for the first time in college. I just literally packed my stuff and flew straight to San Francisco to start school. I didn't know anything, I didn't know anyone. So I was there for about two years and then I started to feel kind of weird about being there. I started feeling weird. I started feeling like something was completely off about being in the city. And that's when I realized that I needed therapy. But backtracking a little bit, I have had I had a counselor, a high school counselor in uh, college because I went through a little bit of a rough patch in high school and, and I talked to a therapist then and I really liked the experience of a therapist at the time. So I wanted to kind of continue. I was like, there's something wrong and I need to talk to somebody about it because here I am in this city and I don't know anybody. I, don't, I barely have any friends. College is actually really hard. Like college is so hard. I can't tell you. To transition from high school to college was one of the hardest things I've ever had to experience. Because again, I was in a new city. I didn't know anybody. And I just had a really hard time. Also at the time, I was also living on my own. I was in a very small studio, a little smaller than the studio I'm in right now. <laughs> I started having really not fun thoughts about the fact that I was lonely and sad and the city was able to provide me with a therapist. If you do a little bit of research, you can find therapists in your area that are willing 
to give you therapy for free or at low cost to you. You can do this through Medi-Cal. You can do, do this to the city. There's a lot of therapy options out there for you. I found this really nice lady and I really kind of clicked with her right away. And I've been with this lady ever since then. She's helped me through so much of my stuff. She's helped me through my meeting my husband. She's helped me through getting married. She's helped me through my divorce. She's helped me, especially she's helped me through COVID. She's helped me through moving to Los Angeles recently. She's helped me through so much. But I do want to point out that therapy is not only for when you are going through something, it's good for like transitioning. If you're wanting to transition, therapy is a tool, just like any tool that you find in a toolbox. It's a tool that will help you, guide you through making decisions about your life. So here are 10 things I've learned in my 10 years in therapy. Number one, it's okay to say bye to negative people in your life, including your siblings, your parents, your grandparents, whoever is in your life. And if they're causing you negative emotions, it's okay to say goodbye to them. It's okay to not talk to them. There's somebody very personal in my life that I no longer talk to because of the fact that I was in therapy and my therapist saw clearly through this person as I was telling her the stories of how this person has treated me, saw very clearly through them and they were like, you cannot have a relationship. If you want to heal, you cannot have a relationship with this person. And I no longer have a relationship with that person because my therapist made me realize that so it's okay to say goodbye to people that no longer provide any sort of positive energy to your life i understand that it's hard to say goodbye to negative people because sometimes you may not have the resources sometimes it's very painful um sometimes you're thinking about what other people will think that's a personal decision that you have to make on your own is knowing that you can say goodbye to this person, even if it takes you years to say goodbye to them. You can and you should if they're making you feel crappy about yourself. Number two, happiness is not something you find, it's something you feel. This lesson was really important to me because for a long time I was chasing happiness. I kept saying that if I did this, I would be happy. If I got married, I would be happy. If I had a really nice, beautiful home, I would be happy. If I had a million friends, if I was traveling in the world, I would be happy. But happiness is not something you really find because happiness isn't really lost. It doesn't get lost. Happiness is a feeling and it's in the moment. For instance, if you got an A on a test, you're really excited about that. That feeling comes and then goes. When you accomplish a very good, amazing goal that you've always wanted to accomplish, you feel happy. Again, with the Beyonce concert, when you go to a Beyonce concert, you are elated because that concert was the best concert of my life. Happiness is a feeling because if you try to chase it and try to find it, you will be searching for it for a very long time and you will never find it. It's the best to appreciate your happiness in the moment versus thinking that as soon as you do something, as soon as you make this big decision, you're gonna be happy. Yeah, you're gonna be happy in the moment and then it's gonna go away. Just like with anger, just like with frustration, just like with sadness, it comes and goes. Number three. Depression and anxiety are two sides of the same coin. Whatever you're feeling depressed about, you'll probably feel anxious about. Even though depression or and anxiety are two different feelings, they're stemming from the same trauma or the same problem that you might be having. For me, in my, in my realizing the difference between depression and anxiety is the fact that my anxiety makes me afraid of things. I'm afraid of getting on a flight to fly. I'm afraid of that. A four hour flight freaks me out. But depression makes me not wanna get up and do things and exercise and cook. Those two issues come from the same thing. My trauma and my um, ability 
my inability to cope with whatever is going on at the time. Number four, everyone has trauma, no matter how big or small your trauma is. For a long time, I was, I was severely bullied in school. For a really long time, I didn't think that it was a big deal. I didn't think that I, my being bullied was a big deal. It wasn't like I lost my father. It wasn't like I was hurt severely as a child, but it's still trauma to me. It may not be trauma to somebody else. Somebody could always have it worse than me, but it's still something that affected me as a kid. And that's what my therapist made me realize. Your trauma is your trauma, no matter how big or small you think it is. It still hurts you, it's trauma. Number five. Do either the work today or do it tomorrow. Either way, you have to do the work. So this usually, this just means that no matter what, how you deal with your issues, you have to deal with your issues. If you are having an issue and you haven't truly dealt with it yet, it's gonna come back in some way, shape or form. So instead of ignoring it, you can just deal with it today so you don't have to deal with it tomorrow a perfect example that my therapist gave me is like imagine not going to the dentist for a really long time because you're afraid of the dentist right if you don't go to the dentist your teeth are going to get rotten just like your heart and your brain when it comes to any sort of trauma it's going to get it's going to get rotten so you either Go to the dentist and fix your teeth today or do it tomorrow. Either way, it's going to hurt. So just do it as soon as possible so it doesn't hurt even more. Number six, focus on yourself and what helps you out. This lesson sounds very selfish, but I think it makes sense because you can only literally control what you can do for yourself. You can't control what people say. You can't control what people um are saying about you so that you guys and for me in that video that you guys all saw I there's a lot of not so nice comments in the video I will admit it there's not it's not fun to hear to to have neck people say negative things about me it's not fun for me but the way I deal with that is by turning off the computer going for a walk so I can only control that part of myself I can only control how it affects me as a person I can't control what these people are saying about me in my comments in that video. This is number seven and it's a very interesting one. It has to do with romance and relationships. I, when I first met my ex-husband, I fell for his potential. I fell for his, what he was going to be, right? Not what he was in the moment. So this lesson is, if you're falling in love, do not fall for potential fall for what they are now because at the end of the day they're probably not going to change that much so whatever you think of them in your head is probably not going to come true so don't fall for potential fall for them now because that's not going to change anytime soon number eight love is simply not enough when it comes to relationships when you love somebody very, 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 very much, it's great, it's a good feeling. We love love, I love love too. I'm a hopeless romantic, I love love, right? But it's not enough at the end of the day to sustain a real relationship. It's not enough. You have to have other forms of your expression of somebody else. And one of those keys of expression is communication. You have to communicate what exactly you want in your partner. I'm not trying to be a relationship expert. I'm not trying to give you relationship advice here, but that's one of the things I learned in therapy when it comes to dealing with my ex is that I thought I loved him so much, but then I learned throughout therapy that love, loving and falling in love with somebody is not enough. What you need is communication and what you need is constantly connecting with the person over and over again and telling them exactly how you feel and not hiding your emotions. Number nine, it's okay to not like the holidays. The holidays are coming up and to be completely honest with you all, I dread it every season simply because of the fact that I am single and I am by myself and Unfortunately, this year, I'm not able to go home. 
um, because I simply can't afford to go home this year, but I dread it. But the thing is, it's okay to not like it. Even if you do have the ability to go home, but you're dreading it, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to dread it because some holidays bring up a lot of trauma for a lot of people. It's very stressful because sometimes you don't wanna give gifts. Sometimes you don't wanna spend your money. Sometimes you don't wanna see people that stress you out all the time. You don't wanna sit around the dinner table and talk about politics and racism and, and, and just overall all the bad things in the world. You don't wanna hear other people's opinion. It's okay to dread the holidays. It's okay to feel that way because the holidays are not Disney Channel movies. They're not fun for everybody. And it's not these Hallmark movies. It's not these Hallmark cars that you see every day. And it's okay to dislike it. Number 10. I think we all kind of know this one. It's focusing on the now and not the future. One of the biggest examples is right now with my YouTube thing going off is I was thinking about a lot of the future. I was thinking about what this is going to mean to me, what's going to happen, how is the world seeing me. I was thinking a lot about it, but I was talking to my therapist and she said, why are you thinking about that? Focus on making your videos right now and think about everything else when they come. So focus on the now because tomorrow will be there. You will not know what to do. So focus on the now. Therapy is something that is super, super important to me. And it's been my um, way of coping with a lot of things. Like I said, I've been through a lot. I've transitioned a lot in my life and therapy has done that for me and I'm so appreciative a lot of the stuff that I've learned I've learned I had to learn in my 20s when you're in your 20s you don't really know much I know a lot of people are probably thinking well you didn't know that stuff I didn't I was in my 20s <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know a lot of this stuff until my um my therapist told me um if you've been in therapy before please let me know i'd love to hear your thoughts i'd love to hear your experience um and how it's changed your life and what you've learned and maybe how long you've been in it there's no shame in being in therapy it's a very helpful tool and um i hope to see you in the next video